Hey gang, it's Paul with Sled Pack. Welcome back to the channel. Jordan and I are back here at our main project, and today we're gonna start installing these cabinets. Let's get started. Alrighty gang, setting cabinets is a lot easier than you think. In fact, we have almost everything you need set out on the table in front of me. Let me walk you through each one. Obviously, I need a way to drive the screws. I've got my impact driver with a T15 Torx that matches my screws. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Drill set up with a 3 16th inch drill bit. That's to drill through the face frames to connect those together. Speaking of face frames, Jordan and I bought this Bessie cabinet face frame clamp. It's gonna make sure that the face frames on adjacent cabinets line up perfectly. It's a little detail, but it matters big time in the end. Previous videos, you've seen us use these antique clamps. I love those, but we wanna try this one out and see how it works. I think that's gonna be fantastic and a lot easier. Obviously, we need some shims. I like the long ones, but the store only had these short ones. That's gonna be fine, and I got four little packs. Here's the screws we're gonna use, GRK cabinet screws. We like the ones with the white head, and these are number eight by two and a half inches long. That two and a half inch length works great for us. It's gonna allow us to connect the face frames together like we talked about just a minute ago, but it's also gonna allow us to connect these to the wall. The back of the cabinet's half an inch thick, the drywall's half an inch thick, and the blocking we put up is an inch and a half thick. Those total to two and a half, so there's no reason for us to use a longer screw. Obviously, a couple of levels, wanna make sure everything's plumb and level. And the last thing we got over here is our cross line laser. Now, you don't need one, you can do this with a level, but if you don't have a cross line laser, it's time you get one. Now this is a Bosch GLL100G. Now you don't need a fancy Bosch. You can go online, you can find a lot of good lasers for a little bit of money. And if you're doing this only one time, it's well worth the investment. And we also have a chalk line. Because once we get the laser line set up where we want it, we're gonna pop a line on top of the laser line. Then we turn the laser off so it's not in my eyes all the time, right? All right, you ready, bud? Let's do it. All right. Now our first step is we gotta find out where the highest spot of our slab is. We all know that your slab or your wooden subfloor is gonna be crooked, right? It's not all gonna be level. Is it doing this? Is it doing this? Or is it doing that? We gotta know. So the laser's giving us a perfect field to reference from and we're gonna measure from that laser line to the slab, to the subfloor, and find our high spot. And this can be a random dimension here. It can be 24 inches, it can be 48, it doesn't matter, it's just a reference right now. So let's find the high spot in this slab. Grab our tape measure, I got a pencil too. I'm gonna put the tape measure on the slab, and where are we at? 34 and a half, I'm just gonna write that on the wall. One last thing I gotta remember, and if there's something I don't wanna forget on this project, are these dimensions, because they're critical. So 34 and a half right there. Let's come to the middle of the wall, see where we're at, check it out. 34 and a half, pretty unusual. All right, and what do we have over here? <laughs> 34 and a half. All right, let's go check that other side. All right, what do we have here? 34 and three quarters. So we're a little lower right here. I'm gonna write that on the wall. We'll go right under the window, in the middle of the sink. 34 and three quarter. And one more right here by the peninsula. 34, nine. Sure. All right. All right, now that all our numbers are written on the wall, which one is the high spot? Is it the smallest number, 34 and a half, or is it the largest number, 34 and nine sixteenths? Well, the high spot is the smaller of the numbers, the lower number. If you're having trouble wrapping your brain around that, just hit the pause button, get it figured out, hit the play button. Now that we have our height established, we're gonna use the laser to establish a working level line on the wall. That working level line is gonna be what we reference when we install our base cabinets so they're perfectly level. Now check it out. In the United States, most base cabinets are gonna be 34 and a half inches tall. We're gonna add an eighth to that and our working line is gonna be 34 and five eighths. Why did we add an eighth? If it was at 34 and a half, the height of the laser, this is what's gonna happen it's gonna interfere with the laser beam. And we're not gonna be able to see the laser beam back here, for instance. And I can even prove it to you right here. Look at that. That laser beam is kissing the top of this cabinet all across the top plane of it. And that's perfect. In fact, this cabinet's looking really nice without any shim, so I think it's gonna be pretty easy to install. So now that we know that 34 and 5 eighths is our working line, all we gotta do is come over here and make a mark on the wall at 34 and 5 eighths, and then adjust our laser beam to those marks. Then we're gonna grab our chalk line, connect the marks, basically replace the laser line with chalk so we can save the battery and save our eyes. Let's snap a chalk line. All 
right, now that we've got our perfectly level chalk line established on both walls, we are ready to set cabinets. Now we can start over here by the microwave where it's high, or we can start over here by the dishwasher where it's low. It doesn't matter as long as the back of the cabinets are touching that line and we get them plumbing level this way. We're going to show you step by step all of that. You're going to be fine. It doesn't matter where you start. Now, while I'm on the subject of where I start, we're going to take a little pause and I'm going to head off about half the comments right now. A lot of guys are insistent that you must install the upper cabinets first. I like to do the bottom ones for a couple of reasons. Number one, I got the granite guys coming. They're going to be making their templates, heading back to the shop, cutting, sanding, polishing, all that granite. They're not putting countertops on the upper ones. We don't need those installed right now. I need the lower ones in place. The second reason for me is I've got a big upper cabinet over the fridge. I have no idea where it goes left or right until I get this wall cabinet mounted, which is going to line up with the end of this bottom cabinet. Sure, you could measure all that three or four times and hope you're right, but there's little room for error. So the main argument for hanging the uppers first is so that you don't damage the bottom cabinets. So just be safe, careful, and use proper protection. Why don't we start right here, Jordan? This one's going to be easy. I say we start with that and get an easy W. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. Now, I know this wall is just under 12 feet wide. I'm going to hook my tape over here on the right, and I'm going to make a mark oh, at six feet. I'm going to hook it on the left, make a mark at six feet. Now, where's the middle of my wall? It's exactly in between there. I don't have to try to get 11 foot 9 and 5 16 and divide it in half, right? I just got to divide that in half. So that's like three and a quarter, so an inch and five eighths, right? Boom, that's the middle. Now that we have our center line, we're gonna put a 30 inch range in there, right? So what do I have to do? 30 divided by two is 15, and I make a mark at 15, right? That's the edge of my first cabinet. You're already doomed, check it out. See the face frame right here? It sticks out past the cabinet by a quarter of an inch. If I line this up with my mark, this is gonna interfere with the range. How would you like to be the one to tell your wife, hey honey, I gotta cut the new face frame on our brand new cabinets because the range doesn't fit. You gotta account for that. And we're actually gonna count a little bit more. I'm gonna go 15 and 3 eighths total, and that's gonna give me a little more wiggle room right here, just in case that range is a little bigger because it got hot or the insulation expanded or whatever. It works for refrigerators too. All right, 15 and 3 eighths, right there. Erase that one so I don't reference it. And then 15 and 3 eighths this way. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting 15 and 3 eighths on my center line. I'm just using the pencil. I don't even have to look. I'm using the end of the tape as a scribe like that. That should be 30 and 3 quarters total width. It is. But remember, half of that is made up of this quarter inch face frame on both sides. So my actual opening out here is 30 and a quarter. Hope that makes sense, guys you got to count for the face frame. All right, we have our first set of cabinets on the mark we made to the left of the range, and we're ready to go. Now, one thing we're having to deal with on this kitchen remodel is this parquet floor, which is going to remain. If you remember back in the demo, there was a wall here, and I have to patch that. We have some resources for this parquet. We actually have some outside. We can take some from another part of the house, but we are going to have to patch that. I'm not looking forward to it. I didn't want to patch here, and the cabinet is sitting on top of the floor. So instead of removing the floor and having the cabinet sit on the slab like the rest of it, I just cut this off, and now it's sitting on top of the parquet. So it's going to be fine. Let's get these two fastened to the wall. But first we need our fancy Bessie face frame clamp and I need to get into this impossible to open packaging. But I have the perfect tool. Our friends at Klein sent me a Klein pocket knife. Check it out. Aluminum housing, stainless steel blade, made in the USA baby, and this thing is wicked sharp. Check it out. There we go. <laughs> All right, gang, here it is. Check it out. It even comes with felt pads that go on the jaws so we don't damage our finish. And check out the edge here. While it's clamped together, it allows you to put the screw in and then remove the clamp. This little lever flips down, and that's an eighth inch bushing. Previously, we said we're going to use a three sixths inch drill bit. Well, we changed our minds. Now we're going to go with an eighth. And the idea is that you drill that hole, flip this out of the way, drive the screw to fasten your face frames together, then remove your clamp. Pretty cool design, huh? Yeah. Let's see how it works. See that? Hold it in nice and flush. That 
that's it. Nice. All right, our face frames are connected together and the white screws look great. Now, we were so excited about using the face frame clamp. I really wasn't thinking ahead, but these would be better on this side so they're hidden by the drawer. But they're white and they'll be concealed even when the door's open. But this one is ready to be attached to the wall. We're on our corner mark right here. We've already checked it for level and plumb. We're good to go. So we're gonna put a screw right here to lock it into place. Well, how do I know what I'm gonna put it into? Check it out. Way back in the framing stage, we put blocking. The middle row of that blocking, the middle of that row of blocking is at 33 inches. If this is 34 and a half, a screw an inch and a half down will be right in the middle of that block. I've got a two and a half inch screw ready to go in the impact driver. Let's get this one done. And that's why you go to all the trouble of installing blocking. All right, our first cabinet is in. It's time to do this one. But as you can see, I'm a little bit below our chalk line. Now I can't get under here in the middle to put a shim to raise this one up. So we drove a screw right there. I'm gonna use my S-wing pry bar, pry it up to the line, and we're gonna drive this screw. Nice. All right, the top is secure. Now, in all honesty, we got lucky on these. We never have to set cabinets without shims, but I'm sure they're gonna make up for it on that side. Now, because we have these drawers here, there's a possibility that when you pull the drawers out, it could pull the bottom of the cabinet out, right? Now, we got the parquet floor trapping our cabinets, but you're usually not gonna have that. So we like to put a screw in the bottom. Now, we didn't put blocking at the bottom, but I know where the studs are. How do I know? Check it out. We have an adjustable depth box right there, just like this. Because of this screw right here, I know the studs on the left. And 11 inches will put me about in the middle of that stud. I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and put a screw 11 inches from the right-hand side of the box. Now we're gonna do the same thing in the bottom corner of this one. Now we know we have a stud pack right here, right? That's actually where our name came from, a pack of studs that's holding up a beam. So let's head down here and put a screw into that stud pack. All right, this one's done. Just rinse and repeat for the other side. All right, this right-hand side is done, and even though the time-lapse made it look quick and easy, this side was slow and hard. Remember, we put this side in with hardly any shims? This one, we got shims all over it, and that's just the nature of installing cabinets, right? We got our baseline here, that's easy for us to reference, but then you gotta get it level this way, and plumb this way, and this way, and level that way, right? And every time you move one of those, it seems to change everything else. And one key thing that Jordan and I like to do is to get on the edge here and sight right down here, not just this one, but the far cabinet as well, making sure that the tops line up and the faces line up so that our stone all lines up. And that's a detail you don't see in kitchens too much anymore. I'm always looking at that, and some of these things look like a river going down the wall. Now we showed you this one in time lapse, but tomorrow we're gonna show you step by step how we install this sink base. We've got these four cutouts to make, and we're not talking about one big window we're gonna cut out of the back of the cabinet. We're gonna cut out four precise holes for the hot, cold, the drain, and the electric. It's gonna look fantastic, and it's gonna set your project apart. But we got a late start on the cabinets today because we were spray painting the cabinets in the back this morning. But we're gonna be right back here bright and early tomorrow and we're gonna show you how we install this sink base. We'll see you then. All right guys, it's the next day and we are ready to install our sink base. There's one of two ways you could do it, right? You could cut a hole in the back of that cabinet big enough to accommodate all your utilities or we could cut four separate holes, one for each, and that's what we're gonna do. We've already established this working line. And we're gonna measure down from that to find the center line of these three pipes and then our box, and then we've established a center line right here using the same method we did on the opposite wall. We set up our laser beam, and then as you can see, we've already put a pencil line there. So we can turn off the laser, save the battery. So let's shut the laser off and start measuring. All right, got the center line on the back of the cabinet, center line on the wall. Let's start measuring. I'm just gonna start measuring with the cold. We're going to the center of the pipe. 
I am 10 and an eighth inches to the center of the pipe from the center line of my wall. I'm come over here, transfer it. Boom. 12 and 5 sixteenths. <laughs> we can be that precise, right? Well, I got you a bit that doesn't really allow for error. <laughs> 13 and 7. Hook it on the cabinet. Look at that. 13 and 7. 13 and a quarter. 17 and a half. Two and a half, six and a half. Yep. All right. All right, we've got all our marks. We've got our hole saws. And that's the one Jordan got me for the half inch copper. You must have a lot of confidence in me, bud. I do. All right, let's go. And yes, I'm gonna stop and finish it from the other side. All right, uh, pick it up on the line. We've got plenty of room, just like that. Nice. All right, got the sink base installed. Now let's keep rolling forward. To the right of the sink is gonna be the dishwasher. And then we have this little guy, and I think there's a trash can that goes here. But here's a cool trick for you to get this dimension always the same. In the United States, every dishwasher I've ever installed needs 24 inches. Yes, there are some smaller dishwashers, but I'm talking about a standard dishwasher in the American home, 24 inches. So here's the cool trick. Just cut two pieces of wood 24 inches long, and we drilled a pocket hole in each end. One screw on each end is all you need. And we're gonna use a pocket screw basically to put that right there. And that's gonna act as our spacer, top and bottom. And then we don't have to worry about that dimension. It's set. All we have to worry about is getting this plumb and level. And this trick would also work for a 30 inch range, a 36 inch range, a trash compactor, whatever appliance you need to put under a cabinet. And it's a great help if you're working by yourself. It's one less thing you have to worry about. All right, but let's get these two screwed to our face frames and get this cabinet set, and then we'll work on the peninsula up behind me. All right, this little cabinet is done, and these spacers help tremendously. And here's how Jordan and I do it. Obviously, we got our line on the wall, the chalk line. We establish the back of the cabinet on that line, and we put shims in the back to help us support the cabinet on that line. Then we put shims in the front and we get it plumb this way and level. And we're checking it this way. It's a big dance. Your house is gonna be a little bit different, right? Because your walls are not the same as our walls. But the goal, we want to level front to back, side to side, and I even do it this way and this way. Last thing we always do, sight down the face of your cabinets. Make sure this face frame is perfectly in line with this face frame. Now that that's all done, Let's come over here and work on the peninsula. What if you have an island or a peninsula and you don't have a wall to attach your cabinets to? Well, you gotta attach it to the floor. In our case, concrete floor. Let's show you how we do it. We're using a 36 inch wide three drawer base as our peninsula and we have it where we want it. Where do we want it? We want it so we don't have any crashes, right? We don't want this drawer when we pull it out to hit the knob or the handle on this door. If this were a dishwasher and you open the door, we don't want that door to hit the handle on this drawer. That's what we're talking about. And Jordan and I measured not once, not twice, not three times. I think we actually measured four times and got these two distances where we want it. Once we established that, we put a framing square here and made sure the two units are square. Our next step is to attach this to our concrete slab. If this were a wooden subfloor, it'd be easy, but this is gonna be a little bit tough. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna put a line on our floor right here in the front in the back, we may even use blue tape because we have a finished floor here. Then we're gonna remove the peninsula and mount a block on the slab half an inch inboard of our mark. Why am I going half an inch inboard? Because this plywood is half an inch thick. We're gonna set this over the block and then fasten our cabinet to that block. Let's make the marks on the floor and get started. Might as well just go to it 16. 
That's an idea of what it's gonna look like, but we have our floor to deal with. Instead of cutting this floor away, we're just gonna notch the block so it's sitting on the slab right here. Boom, that's what we want. How are we gonna attach it to the slab? I like to use these split nail anchors. There's all kinds of ways you can do that. A ram set, Tapcon, use what makes you happy. Let's grab our rotor hammer and get these fastened to the floor. There we go guys, pretty slick, huh? And you'll notice we put a piece of tar paper between our blocking and the slab to prevent any wicking because we didn't have any pressure treated here. And you're probably saying, good job, sled pack, way to think ahead. But let me ask you this, how come we don't put tar paper under all these shims? Or how come we don't put tar paper under a pocket door that's sitting on a slab? Now attaching the peninsula to the blocks, we're gonna do it in two different ways. On this side, since this side of the cabinet's gonna be obscured, it's gonna be hidden, we're gonna just go right through the side of the cabinet into the block. But over here, we don't wanna see any fasteners over here because it looks super clean when the cabinet is sitting on this parquet floor. No so quarter round, in other words. Correct, no quarter round, no shoe, no caulk, nothing like that. We would never do that. We're gonna actually use these clips that came with the cabinet. We've got like 500 of them, right? We're gonna put one there, one there. Now we're gonna fasten them to the block, set our cabinet, then we're gonna reach in under the toe kick right here and go into the side of the cabinet. Kind of a pain to reach in there with a the drill, but it's only four screws and it's gonna look killer and clean on the outside. All right, let's put the peninsula back where it goes using our tape on the floor as a reference. That was painless. <laughs> All right. Now for the back tip. <laughs> Going in. Get it? Yep. Yeah, I can see. Am, am I in? Let me see. Yeah. Oh. oh. The other, gotta, the other three were so easy. You gotta come up, you're pressing, you're committing too, too hard too early. Get in and then press. Right, there you go. There, all right, get it. Uh, <laughs> Let me try from over here. Yeah, maybe you can push. Yeah. That would be hard. It would be so worth it. Nice. Now you'll notice down here, we intentionally cut the block a little short so we could get our shims in there and they wouldn't hit the block. Got to think ahead all the time. <sighs> Dude, this is ever like a hurricane, I'm gonna hide in this cabinet. Cool man, our base cabinets are in and this is starting to look like a real kitchen, right? We got our dishwasher opening, all our cutouts in the back of the sink base, our Rock of Gibraltar's Peninsula right here and all of these other cabinets, all the cabinets are plumb level and square, six different ways. So pick yourself up a line laser, practice on your like button, make sure it's plumb level and square, six different ways. Smash it for me and Jordan, ask a question, drop a comment. Most of all, please subscribe, and we will see you on our next video.